Hi, I'm John Hart and welcome back to Mr. America Hart today. High reps or heavy weight, which is best for building muscle? So I'm going to use a few examples for you, okay? Mm, Serge Newbret, Tom Platts, Mike O'Hearn, Franco Colombo. Wow, I just threw four names out at you. What do they all have in common? What are some of the similarities? What are some of the differences? They all had great physiques. They all have great physiques. You know, the ones that are still going, Michael Hearn in particular. So let's run through it really quick here, okay? Serge Nubret. I'm using these as examples of different categories. I said high reps versus heavy weights. Here we go. Serge Nubret. Strictly a high rep, high set, relatively lightweight training bodybuilder. Fantastic physique. In his era, amazing physique, plenty of muscle, ripped to the bone. The weight training had little to do with that. His diet was on point. Of course, you know, chemicals were involved, but look, high reps worked very well for his physique, for his body, kept his joints in decent shape into an older age. He built muscle with it. Good example of high repetition training. I'm going to give you another one though. Tom Platts, old friend of mine. I've seen him train many, many times at Gold's Gym in Venice, World Gym in Marina del Rey, as well as Venice. Tom Platts, I saw him during his prime years, the you know early 80s, straight through till he was retired and even into right around 50 years old. Tom trained high reps, a lot of reps but he did use heavier weights and was known for being one of the thicker physiques of his time. Amazing, amazing development and thickness, especially in his quadriceps, but a great physique for his time. He was, I mean, he was a monster for his time frame of competing. So if we say all things being equal chemically during that era with pro bodybuilders, he did train different, quite different from a lot of his contemporaries. He did a lot of repetitions. He did use heavier weights. Okay, I'm gonna get there in a moment. Okay, Franco Colombo, third person I mentioned. Franco Colombo, he trained heavy weight, heavy weight. And he had a thickness, a density to his physique. Out of everybody that I mentioned, I, I dare say that he probably had the densest looking muscle tissue out of all of them on his body. And he was known for being the strongest pound for pound bodybuilder in the world during his time at 185 pounds. He was lifting some massive weights, known for using bench presses, deadlifts, squats with massive weights, as well as other lifts with massive weights. And he had a density to his body, trained relatively speaking in a lower repetition range, most times mixing it with slightly higher around 12 repetitions when he would train with Arnold. So again, a lot of people witnessed this happening live at Gold's Gym, World Gym. I was a trainer at both places and again, got it firsthand from training partners that they had at the time as well as witnessing it myself. Fourth person, Mike O'Hearn. Uh, Mike is a freak of nature. Uh, as he's uh, got to be approaching 50 or he's past 50 at this point and looks better than he did at 40, looks better than he did at 30. Uh, truly uh, an amazing physique. Uh, an old friend of mine and Mike trains heavy, a lot of repetitions and some exercises, but for the most part, not low repetition, heavy training, you know, and he believes in what's called Wolf's Law, which is, you know, if you pound uh, uh, a part of the body enough, it'll change its shape, its density. It'll, I'm giving you the layman's version of Wolf's Law. Uh, it will adjust accordingly to the stress you put upon it. So he believes in training with heavy weights and it will develop strength in not just the tendons, the ligaments, the bone density, and that muscle. Muscle fires in an all or nothing principle. So he's actually, each one of the gentlemen I mentioned, that trained heavy with heavier weights, each one of them 
is taking advantage of the all or nothing principle. They're activating more muscle fibers. Well, then you'll say to me, well, John, why don't they just become a power lifter? Because a power lifter in general lifts between one, three, and five repetitions most times year round. They should be activating the most muscle tissue. Well, yes, they're activating them, but not necessarily for hypertrophy. Hypertrophy occurs when you work more within a certain repetition range. Let's just call it for simplicity's sake, anywhere from five to 20 repetitions, generally. Again, my bell curve, for the majority of people out there, five to 20 repetitions works well on just about any body part to increase the size of the muscle tissue and its strength. Are there outliers? Absolutely. I call Serge Nubret an outlier because he got such great results doing high repetition training with lighter weights. So let's take him off the board because I believe 100% to my core that he was an outlier. You don't see a lot of people training doing pumping sets, literally doing pumping sets uh, with light weights. He benched no more than 225 on a bench press, but he'd sit there and spend half the day doing it for a lot of repetitions and a lot of sets. So I consider him to be an outlier. Now we're left with Tom Platz, Franco Colombo, Michael Hearn. Great physiques, all of them. Okay, Tom Platz, let's talk about him. This is all some food for thought, okay? I'm not citing specific studies. I am saying food for thought. Tom Platz, I happen to have right here next to me uh, one of his books that he wrote earlier on called Pro Style Bodybuilding. And <laughs> if you can get a hold of this one, I'll put the link down below, okay, where you can find one of these. Uh, it's, it's, it's rare to find a, one in good condition, but I've had this copy and all throughout the book, Tom gives a lot of his advice on training from when he was younger and competing. And it's great. It's great. He discusses heavy versus light training. He discusses how he does do both technically. He does do dumbbell flies with 35 pound dumbbells but that's at the end of his chest workout when he's already done sets with up to 100 pound dumbbells. He's already done incline dumbbell presses with 150 pound dumbbells. I mean, those are big weights, those are heavy weights. He does both low repetitions and higher repetitions within a given set, the total number of repetitions in a workout quite a bit. Now, Tom Platz did not work out regularly six, seven days a week. He was not a pumper per se. He lifted big weights and he had a density to his muscle, a thickness. But he also believed in, especially where his quads were concerned, where he would do one workout heavier in the lower rep range mainly, and then another one in a higher repetition range. All within, let's just say all within, you know, reason. So did he use high repetitions? Yes, he did. Did he use big weights? Yes, he did. Big weights. So Tom Platz is a good example of which is better, high repetitions or heavy weights? Well, he believes in doing high repetitions with heavy weights. He believes in doing heavy weights with a total number of repetitions within a workout, accumulating to be a lot of repetitions. So that's a way of looking at it. And it worked for him. I don't believe that he was an outlier. I believe that he trained properly for the large majority of our bell curve. This is my observation over the course of years. Tom also happened to be one of the hardest, if not the hardest training bodybuilder I've ever seen, ever, bar none. Actually, I'm just calling it. He was the hardest training. He trained so hard, I mean, his eyeballs looked like they were gonna bleed. So he would stop Gold's Gym in Venice, literally, with a set of incline dumbbell curls. He would stop Gold's Gym, of course, if he was squatting. The whole gym would stop, everybody, to watch him squat. It was amazing to see because he had those famous quads. But he would use a lot of repetitions with big weights in total, in total. Would he lift a heavy weight at the beginning of that workout for lower repetitions? Sure, he would. I've seen him deadlift, you know, a set of five repetitions. Sure, sure. I've seen him squat heavy, heavy weights for five or eight repetitions. Sure, he does. He did. But then he'd follow that up with a lot of repetitions. So we're getting a little bit of a theme here, okay? 
Tom Platz, I believe, is in that bell curve of the majority, not necessarily an outlier. High repetitions at times, heavy weights, yes. Let's move to Franco. Franco, and he had a thick physique. Franco, another one with the densest physique that I can imagine. Trained, he loved to do his power lifts, loved to do his feats of strength, loved to lift for strength, had a density to his muscles, activating as many fibers as possible. Yes, yes, and yes. And then there's <laughs> this video of him training with Arnold They're all over the place doing 12 repetitions of a set, 10 repetitions of a set. Yes, he did that as well. So, so far, we're seeing a little bit of a trend. Was Franco an outlier? Meaning that he could just do powerlifting and get a super, super thick physique? I don't believe so. I look at some of the older pictures of him, you know, before he was really training with Arnold as his training partner in the early 70s, and he didn't quite have the size that he had earlier on when he started his bodybuilding. So there's a little bit of an assumption going on here on that one, and I can't ask him directly right now, obviously. May he rest in peace. However, we're going to go with Franco did both higher, higher reps, and he also did heavier weight. So there's a little bit of trend now. Tom Platz, Franco, Mike O'Hearn, Mike O'Hearn. Wow. Another one with a great physique, density, thickness, ripped, at times ripped, keeps itself in great shape, takes good care of his body. Um, doesn't seem to be broken, you know, for someone who lifts as a power lifter a large time of the year. So for someone who believes in lifting heavy, heavy weights, Incline presses, big weights, four plates, four and a half plates, four repetitions on the incline press. I mean, amazing. But the thing I noticed about Mike, he trains really smart. The repetitions on those incline presses, he doesn't open up his shoulders all the way down. He doesn't do over-exaggerated movements like we used to see back in the 70s and the 80s with the guys that blew their shoulders out, the guys that blew their hips out, the guys that blew their knees out. He trains within a safe range of motion. He trains very smart. He does mainly a combination of those power lifts, low repetition training, but then he also does what he calls power bodybuilding, where overall in the course of his workout, he's totaling multiple sets, a decent amount of repetitions with heavy weight. And does he do some lighter weight sets for high repetitions? Higher repetitions, yes. Would I say he does you know, I've never seen him do 30, 40 repetitions, 20, 30, 40 repetitions. So let's just say on the scale of five to 20, would he approach the upper half of that? I'm sure that he would. Again, a combination. So three out of four guys I'm saying are not outliers. Tom Platz, Franco Colombo, Mike O'Hearn. The first one, Serge Nubret. I am calling him an outlier because strictly doing the lightweight pumping multiple sets created a fantastic physique on him. I can only imagine that his a biopsy of his muscle fiber types would have yielded a very large amount of certain type of fibers that respond to very high repetitions, higher endurance fibers. But the other guys still lift. Tom Platz, Franco, Michael Horn, they still lift, the three of them, big weights. They still lift big weights even as they got older. But I have to admit, pretty safely, out of the three of them, Tom Platz was probably the craziest one. I mean, God love him. The craziest one with the weights probably uh, risked the most damage to his body because I saw him training and you know, while he would say he's a feeler with the weights, and that's what he describes in his book, while he was a feeler with the weights, I would at the same time say, man, he was taking a risk on a lot of them, a lot of those exercises during a lot of those sets with high speed lifting. So that could be a little bit dangerous. Out of all of them uh, that I've seen trained live, I never caught Franco during his prime. I'm, that's all anecdotal where Franco is concerned. The anecdotal during his prime, uh, I'm relying on the stories of some of the old timers from Gold Gym and World Gym over the years. 
and how they saw him training and how they trained with him. Out of all of them, Mike O'Hearn, I would say, probably has the best combination of how to lift properly with some heavy weight and also at the same time uh, doing some good repetitions, higher repetitions, not necessarily within a set, but a total number of repetitions within a workout. I like that. So on the heavier weight end yet again with an amazing physique. So take all of this with you today as you go forth and start designing your own workout. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section down below. Hey, before you leave, if you don't mind, all the way to your right, you got that red subscribe button. Why don't you hit that and you'll get notified when some of my future videos come up. And then all the way to your left, why don't you go and slam your elbow down on it if you have to. That like button, okay, that thumbs up button right there. Hit it with your elbow, hit it with your thumb really hard. Just make that thing light up to a blue <laughs> thumbs up. And I really appreciate that. So, that's it. Higher reps or heavier weights. Just giving you some food for thought today. My bottom line, my belief, heavier weights are necessary. And the total number of repetitions within a workout just like some powerlifters believe in the end, is also necessary to create the best physique you can get with that density and muscle that will be long lasting, along with a nice side effect of some great strength. That's it for today. From my heart to you, John Hart, thank you very much for stopping by.